since we've already calibrated the machine with the last measurements at the 530, we're not changing the wavelength, so I don't have to go back and recalibrate to that extent that we did before when we changed the wavelength. So now what we're gonna do is that we're going to take six different solutions. The concentrations of these you will um, find in the lab data uh, that will be on Blackboard. So you'll have these concentrations. I'm just gonna call these solutions one, two, three, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna measure these different solutions at, at the same wavelength, and then we're going to record their transmittance. Once we record the transmittance, then you will convert those to absorbance and do the final graphing uh, that we talked about before where you're gonna plot absorbance versus concentration. So since I started with solution one, and just I'm just gonna do this as a double check. I'm not gonna, there should not be reason to change anything but just that should be close to 100%. 99.8, and these are so touchy. This is the only really calibration I would do. I don't have to go to the extent that we did before. So I'm gonna recheck test the first solution, that was solution one, and hopefully we'll get something similar that we did before. Forty-four point oh, which is not too bad from forty-three point six. Again, that slight difference could just be variability in the machine. So forty-four point oh would be solution one. going to do is to test different solutions with the same substance, the same potassium permanganate, but now I'm going to uh, do different solutions. I'm moving to solution two. And typically what, when I don't have to clean the, the, the cuvette or use a different cuvette each time because typically what we do is we pour this solution out in a waste container then I rinse this with the new solution about three times, so it should get any dilution, concentration effects should be zeroed out. And I'll uh, keep doing that with the rest of these um, solutions. a transmittance of 57.6, 57.6. Again, I'm just gonna go back and make sure we're still at 100%. There should not be much variation there. And now I'm going to use solution three, emptying solution two into a beaker, and then rinsing that cuvette three times with the, the contents for solution three. And solution three is 66.8. Testing again with the water, make sure it's at zero. Moving to solution four. And solution four is 78.4, 78.4. You probably can feel that as we're going to these higher solutions that they're getting more dilute, the color is less saturated, which makes sense because how much light is being absorbed is gonna be dependent on the concentration. And solution five now is 79.4. Solution 
Section 6 is 91.2, 91.2. I should also say that in terms of using the SPEC-20 uh, spectrophotometers, uh, typically the best percentages of transmittance should be in the range of somewhere between 10 and 90. If you get much lower than 10 or much higher than 90, it's not quite as accurate. Now what we're going to do next, we've got two unknowns that we're going to do the same thing, measure there. They're the same substance, but just different concentrations. Before I do that, just to double check the percent T for 100. And then I'm going to use uh, solution one. This is the unknown solution. And it doesn't necessarily mean that one of these solutions of the unknown will match up exactly to one of the known solutions we've done. It could, it could be some variation of that. And for solution unknown one, I've got 55.8. 55.8. And unknown to is 85.0, 85.0. different wavelengths. Typically UV, the ultraviolet, the wavelength goes from 200 to about 400. If I'm looking at visible light, visible light usually goes from 400 to about nine, excuse me, 900 nanometers. We kind of narrowed ours down because we didn't need to go that far up. But let's say that you're doing a chemical reaction and you're trying to tell whether or not the reagent has reacted or if you've gotten a certain amount of product, you could take a sample of your solution and run it through a spec 20 and then actually calculate, measure the absorbance. If you know the epsilon or molar absorptivity, you could calculate the concentration. So that's a way that you can actually use that to follow 
how long the reaction needs to go or is it completed so you could look at reaction uh, kinetics that way. Uh, the other thing is in terms of, and I'll go back to dye stuffs or dye units, they are really concerned about that molar absorptivity value. So if you measure the absorbance, you know what the concentration is, you can determine that molar absorptivity value and that is of great use to a dye chemist when they're trying to use the minimum amount of dye stuff to impart a certain color. Um, the other thing is um, you can do for quality control for dye stuffs so if they need to have a certain range of that random X value. And then um, one other thing that if you do change your solvent, those absorbent random X values do 